In these videos, I'm going to be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses, or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. For this question, we've got a mass which is being held up by two ropes connected to the wall and the ceiling at different angles. This question is a little different because they don't tell us the mass of that object. They tell us that the tension in the left cable is 420 newtons. So that's going to be the value for T1. For part A, they want us to find the tension in the right cable, which they've labeled there as T2. And then for part B, they want us to determine the mass of the hanging object. The first thing we want to do for any static equilibrium problem is to start with a good free body diagram. So we're going to take the point where all three of those ropes connect and use that as the center of our free body diagram. Now we've got the force of gravity going downwards, so that's going to be due to the mass which is hanging down. And then we've got T1, which is going up and to the left, and then T2, which is going up and to the right. Now those angles that they gave us, the 50 and 60 degrees, are not really the angles that we want. What we need is the angle between the tension forces and either the horizontal or the vertical. So what I've done for both the tension forces is found the angle between them and the horizontal, just to make our equations a little more consistent. Now that we've got our free body diagram, we can come up with our equations. So we know that the system is in static equilibrium, which just means that if we add up all the forces in any direction, it has to equal zero. So for this question, we've only got two dimensions. We've got the x and the y. So we're going to have two equations, sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero and sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero. Since we don't know the mass of that object or the force of gravity, it's going to be a little easier to start with the sum of forces in the x direction. Any force that's pointing to the right is going to be positive, and then any force that's pointing to the left is going to be negative. So what we can write out here is T2 times cos 30, and we're going to make that one positive. So that's going to take the x component of tension number 2, and then we'll subtract T1 cos 50. So that'll take the x component of T1, which is pointing to the left, or the negative x direction. So we'll have all that equal to 0. Now we can rearrange our equation for T2 and then plug in the value for T1 that they gave us in the question. And if we do that, punch that in, we get 311.7 newtons for T2. And that's going to be the answer for part A. Now that we know the tension in the right side of that cable, we can use the sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero to determine the mass of the hanging object. So in the y direction, we've got T1 sine 50. So that's going to be the y component of T1, which is pointing upwards. So it's going to be positive. And then we've got the same for T2, but with sine 30. And then FG is pointing downwards, so we're going to call that one negative. And all that will be equal to zero. Now the force of gravity can be replaced with M times G, where M is the mass of the object, and G is just going to be a constant, 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So once we have that, then we can rearrange our equation for the mass, plug in our numbers, and we end up with a mass of 48.7 kilograms. So let's recap what we did here. For any static equilibrium problem, we're going to want to start with a free body diagram. Once we have our free body diagram, then we have to think about which equation we want to use first. Do we want to use sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero or sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero? So take a look at your free body diagram, take a look at what they're asking for, and then try and see which one is going to make it a little bit easier. For us, it's going to be easier to use sum of forces in the x direction first because we know more information about the x direction than we do the y direction. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.